Section 17 of The Schoolmaster and Other Stories by Anton Chekhov. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by William Tomko. The Schoolmaster and Other Stories by Anton Chekhov. Section 17 Ladies. Fyodor Petrovich the director of elementary schools in the north district who considered himself a just and generous man was one day interviewing in his office a schoolmaster called vremensky no mr vremensky he was saying your retirement is inevitable you cannot continue your work as a schoolmaster with a voice like that how did you come to lose it i drank cold beer when i was in a perspiration hissed the schoolmaster what a pity after a man has served fourteen years such a calamity all at once the idea of a career being ruined by such a trivial thing what are you intending to do now the schoolmaster made no answer are you a family man asked the director a wife and two children your excellency hissed the schoolmaster a silence followed the director got up from the table and walked to and fro in perturbation. "'I cannot think what I am going to do with you,' he said. "'A teacher you cannot be, and you are not yet entitled to a pension. To abandon you to your fate and leave you to do the best you can is rather awkward. We look on you as one of our men. You have served fourteen years, so it is our business to help you. But how are we to help you? What can I do for you?' put yourself in my place what can i do for you a silence followed the director walked up and down still thinking and vremensky overwhelmed by his trouble sat on the edge of his chair and he too thought all at once the director began beaming and even snapped his fingers i wonder i did not think of it before he began rapidly listen this is what i can offer you next week our secretary at the home is retiring if you like you can have his place there you are vremensky not expecting such good fortune beamed too that's capital said the director write the application today dismissing vremensky fyodor petrovitch felt relieved and even gratified the bent figure of the hissing schoolmaster was no longer confronting him and it was agreeable to recognize that in offering a vacant post to vremensky he had acted fairly and conscientiously like a good-hearted and thoroughly decent person but this agreeable state of mind did not last long when he went home and sat down to dinner his wife natasya ivanovna said suddenly oh yes i was almost forgetting nina sergeyevna came to see me yesterday and begged for your interest on behalf of a young man i am told there is a vacancy in our home yes but the post has already been promised to someone else said the director and he frowned and you know my rule i never give posts through patronage i know but for nina sergeyevna i imagine you might make an exception she loves us as though we were relations and we have never done anything for her and don't think of refusing fedya you will wound both her and me with your whims who is it that she is recommending polzuchin what polzuchin is it that fellow who played chatsky at the party on new year's day is it that gentleman not on any account the director left off eating not on any account he repeated heaven preserve us but why not understand my dear that if a young man does not set to work directly but through women he must be good for nothing why doesn't he come to me himself after dinner the director lay on the sofa in his study and began reading the letters and newspapers he had received dear fyodor petrovitch wrote the wife of the mayor of the town you once said that i knew the human heart and understood people now you have an opportunity of verifying this in practice k n pozuhin whom i know to be an excellent young man will call upon you in a day or two to ask you for the post of secretary at our home he is a very nice youth if you take an interest in him you will be convinced of it and so on on no account was the director's comment heaven preserve me 
After that, not a day passed without the directors receiving letters recommending Pozuhin. One fine morning, Pozuhin himself, a stout young man with a close-shaven face like a jockey's, in a new black suit, made his appearance. "'I see people on business not here but at the office,' said the director dryly, on hearing his request. "'Forgive me, Your Excellency, but our common acquaintances advise me to come here.' "'Hm,' growled the director, looking with hatred at the pointed toes of the young man's shoes. "'To the best of my belief, your father is a man of property, and you are not in want,' he said. "'What induces you to ask for this post? The salary is very trifling.' "'It's not for the sake of the salary. It's a government post, anyway. "'Hm. It strikes me that within a month you will be sick of the job, and you will give it up, "'and meanwhile there are candidates for whom it would be a career for life. "'There are poor men for whom I shan't get sick of it, Your Excellency,' Pozuhin interposed. "'Honor bright, I will do my best.' "'It was too much for the director.' tell me he said smiling contemptuously why was it you didn't apply to me direct but thought fitting instead to trouble ladies as a preliminary i didn't know that it would be disagreeable to you pozuhin answered and he was embarrassed but your excellency if you attach no significance to letters of recommendation i can give you a testimonial he drew from his pocket a letter and handed it to the director at the bottom of the testimonial which was written in official language and handwriting stood the signature of the governor everything pointed to the governor's having signed it unread simply to get rid of some importunate lady there's nothing for it i bow to his authority i obey said the director reading the testimonial and he heaved a sigh send in your application to-morrow there's nothing to be done and when Pozuhin had gone out, the director abandoned himself to a feeling of repulsion. Sneak, he hissed, pacing from one corner to the other. He has got what he wanted, one way or the other, the good-for-nothing toady, making up to the ladies, reptile, creature. The director spat loudly in the direction of the door by which Pozuhin had departed, and was immediately overcome with embarrassment for at that moment a lady the wife of the superintendent of the provincial treasury walked in at the door i've come for a tiny minute a tiny minute began the lady sit down friend and listen to me attentively well i've been told you have a post vacant to-day or to-morrow you will receive a visit from a young man called pozuhin the lady chattered on, while the director gazed at her with lusterless, stupefied eyes, like a man on the point of fainting, gazed and smiled from politeness. And the next day, when Vremensky came to his office, it was a long time before the director could bring himself to tell the truth. He hesitated, was incoherent, and could not think how to begin, or what to say. He wanted to apologize to the schoolmaster, to tell him the whole truth, but his tongue halted like a drunkard's, his ears burned, and he was suddenly overwhelmed with vexation and resentment that he should have to play such an absurd part, in his own office, before his subordinate. He suddenly brought his fist down on the table, leaped up, and shouted angrily, "'I have no post for you. I have not, and that's all about it. Leave me in peace. Don't worry me.' Be so good as to leave me alone. And he walked out of the office. End of section seventeen. Recording by William Tomko.